Abu Dhabi Dude! Hello, this is Abu Dhabi Dude! Welcome back! And uh, I'm quite excited about today's vlog, um, which probably makes me quite sad. But for today's vlog, I am on the way to try out for the very first time Ionity. They have finally, and I do mean finally, opened the uh, Gretna station. Um, for anybody that doesn't know where Gretna is, it's right on the Scottish-English border over on the west side of, of Scotland. Uh, just on the Scottish side of the border. Kind of not far from Dumfries and Carlisle, that kind of area. So, uh, because they finally opened it, they started construction in December 2018 and now it's the end of August 2019 so it's pretty much nine months they've been uh, making this this charging station for it's taken them nine months to build it and commission it uh, which is mind-blowing really but it finally went live I think it was yesterday morning it went live um, so I've decided to hot foot it right down there um, and try it out now obviously I wasn't going there anyway so this is purely for the purposes of trying it but when I discovered yesterday that it wasn't that it was um, it was live I decided not to charge up last night so I'm setting off with 70% um, which and the, the purpose for that is I don't want to arrive there with 50, 60, 70% like I, I frequently do on my charging adventures because on this charging adventure one of the things I want to check out is the ultra high speed charging because these are fast chargers they, these theoretically should charge the I-Pace at 100 kilowatts but if I arrive with 70% state of charge that's not going to happen so I left it didn't plug in last night so it was down at actually 71% when I set it off um, but then we've got a 95 mile drive to get there yep that's dedication for you um, partly because I'm a sad muppet and partly just for the channel um, and because I think people will be interested uh, he <laughs> decided that I'm going to do this so the 95 miles Theoretically, it's going to get us there somewhere between 20 and 25% state of charge. But I really want to get it lower than that. So I'm kind of... Ideally, I'd like to arrive with 10%. But less than 20, would I'd be happy with less than 20. Because then I can actually check out the, the fast charging. You know, I can, I can see the whole ramp up, 100 kilowatts maybe... Uh, and then tapering process and get a real idea of of what 100 kilowatt charging is going to be like on the I-Pace um, now there are stories and rumours that they are talking about pushing it and it's something that's been discussed informally uh, with Jaguar officials publicly, they have kind of publicly stated that they're looking to push it to 120 kilowatt charging ultimately but for the moment we're looking at 100 kilowatts now there's all sorts of stories. Obviously, what people sometimes don't grasp is that your charge rate really depends on the day. There are so many variables that can affect the charge rate. Um, you know, if, you, if your battery's too warm, if your battery's too low, if your battery's too high, if the ambient temperature's too high or low, or you know, there's so many things that can prevent a car from charging at its full potential. Um, but there are a lot of stories on the internet about the IPS getting a maximum of 82 to 84 kilowatts and then uh, you know and that's it and then there's also a lot of stories about IPS's charging at uh, 100 kilowatts but for like 30 seconds or a minute and then dropping down to 82, 84 um, but I have seen videos of them charging at 100 kilowatts all the way up to 40% state of charge. So, who knows? 
Now, I'm not expecting it to do 100 kilowatts up to 80% or something like that because that's unrealistic and if it does that, then I would be worried about what it does to the battery. But, I'm hoping to get 100 kilowatts up to somewhere around 40 to 50% and then see it taper. But I'm expecting to still be getting, to be honest, 80 kilowatts I don't think is unreasonable at around about 80% state of charge. It's all conjecture on my part, but knowing that 80% of the state of charge on the iPace is actually about 70%-ish of the total battery capacity, because they've got that top section that they don't let you use, they don't give you access to, to, to prevent, battery, or not prevent, but um, to minimise battery degradation is probably a better way of putting it. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those uh, things that until you try it, you don't really know what you're going to get. And to be honest, even if I don't get 100 kilowatts to 40% today, it doesn't mean it never will. Because like I said, there are so many variables. Sorry, just trying to see my sat nav screen there. There are so many variables um, that can affect it that it doesn't mean the car can't charge 100 kilowatts. However. I'm going today. It should be a, you know, we should be in with a shout today. It's 21 degrees outside, um, you know, so it's not incredibly hot. It's not incredibly Arctic cold either. You know, it's, we're, in, we're at good temperatures for EVs here at 21 degrees. So, uh, hopefully it will, uh, you know, hopefully it will work. Um, but yeah, as I say, we'll find out. That's why I'm quite excited. I've never charged it anything higher than 50 kilowatts Because um, I've never been in a place where that's been available uh, The only ones up till now that I'm aware of have been Maidstone down in uh, Kent And the Milton Keynes, I think, there's an Ionity there And then there's a couple of fast nets, I think, over sort of Sunderland South Shield, somewhere like that nowhere near me uh, I know the BP now have opened a, an ultra high powered charger and so have Instable they've opened a 125 kilowatt charger uh, somewhere in England as well, both of those are somewhere in England, again nowhere near me but we're starting to see them spread and that is brilliant, that is such good news because if you've seen my uh, road trip video actually you won't have seen it because it hasn't been published yet but I did a road trip recently uh, down to England and I did say in that that we really need to see, you know, fast, not the 50 slow, but faster charges appearing, particularly along the motorway network, I think. Um, so seeing them starting to spread to this extent is good. Um, Ionity, I think now, am I right in saying they've got three in the UK? Fastnet have got two. Bizarrely, both within a few miles of each other. Um, and then BP and Instable have got one each and they both are uh, committed to quite an aggressive rollout so I think we're going to see those BP and Instable chargers the rapid, you know, the 125, 150 kilowatt chargers spread quite quickly um, and that'll be great um, so yeah, so that's the whole point of today I'm going to head down there it's a bit of a nice drive as well through the Scottish countryside uh, there's enough cars though that stop me from hooning it too much. The good thing with this trip is because I actually want to get the battery quite low um, and I set off at 70% with a 95 mile drive I don't need to, put, well it's not, I haven't put it in eco, my aircon's running I don't want to be efficient for once so I'm not glued to the speed limit, I'm not you know accelerating like you know moving the accelerator pedal this much and stuff I'm just driving and enjoying it. Um, I will, you know, I'm not going to speed excessively because I don't, I don't believe that that's a sensible thing to do. Um, but I'll, you know, 10% is, you know, not unreasonable in my opinion. I know it's still over, but by the time you allow for inefficiencies and inaccuracies in your speedo in the first place, um, you know it's that 10% isn't even going to be close to that so I'm only going to be slightly over but my point is 
I'm, you know, I'm going to accelerate quite quickly. When I, when I come out of junctions and stuff, um, I'm not going to just gingerly ease onto the accelerator. Not that I really drive like that on my road trips. I'm not that bad, but I, I do take it easy and I do accelerate at a, a you know, at a reduced rate from, you know, way below what the car's capable of, but also probably less than I would normally do if I was just driving, you know, and not having to recharge, you know, not not going to exceed the car's range at any point in the day. So today I'm just going to drive normally and I'm going to hopefully get it down. I'm, on the motorway I'm going to uh, edge above 70, shall we say. Uh, again, I'm not going to do any more than 10% over the limits anywhere. I, I really am not. But I want to get this battery down to as close to 10% as I can today. Um, the roads are dry, so... Uh, you know that's that's going to improve my consumption which for once is not the goal um and we're now in a 20 limit so that's not going to help me much either <laughs> but yeah so um so a lot of driving today for really just not to get anywhere not to do anything other than sit at that ionity charger for a bit and charge up shouldn't be there theoretically i guess i should only be there for about half an hour but i'm expecting to be there for uh, somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour but I don't know we'll find out when we get there um, so thanks for joining me it's not a road trip video though so there won't be loads of scenery footage and driving and dash cam I will cut in a little bit just to because it's my thing and I like it um, so I'll put in some scenery now of the you know the, the drive down there but it will be vastly truncated it will be much less than you would normally see on a uh, on one of my road trip videos um oh, i've just realized actually i think yeah i'm just going past the new is this the new one yeah this is the new it's finally commissioned if you watched my charging adventure uh on the new evolts where i went to uh, cumnock and then down to uh, i think it was mabel wasn't it uh, to test out the new style Evo chargers. Well, the Cumnock one wasn't connected. Well, I've just come past it and it is now connected. Um, it is hooked up. So that's nice, but I'm not going to stop and try it today because I want to get there low. So yeah, uh, that's that's today's trip. That's today's plan. And uh, yeah, public charging adventures of a very new kind. And it doesn't involve Charge Play Scotland. Um, so yeah. As I say, come along, enjoy the drive, as I'm sure I will, and uh, and yeah, I'll talk to you at Ionity.
Okay, exciting times. We are here. I am so looking forward to this. I cannot tell you how much. Okay, I've got everything set up. Um, we are sitting by the charger. Now, there's four here. Although the Ionity app, for some reason, only seems to show three on it. But there are four machines. Um, we are at number... E400903 <laughs> None of that matters But yeah, I'm going to record now I've got a camera filming the Ionity screen um, If I can just show you what I've got here I'm filming the Ionity screen from there um, Oh, I hate wasps <laughs> Go away, you're ruining it um, Yeah, so I'm going to film the Ionity screen from here It's permanently mounted so I can just leave it running uh, I think hope it's permanently mounted seems to have moved a little bit let me just no it's locked off okay and uh, and yeah we'll get the charge going so I'll start off with the uh, recording on the app and then we'll take it from there okay wish me luck so this is the Ionity app you can either scan the QR code or do what I did and go for the station list page that lists all the stations near you and then you just tap on the charger you're at. To be honest, the QR code is easier, but I just went for this one. Um, so that's the machine I'm standing at. Uh, yeah, then you just tap on the charge now button just next to the machine number there at the sort of middle right. Then you select £8 flat, which is your only option. Type in your uh, credit card verification number, which I've edited out for obvious reasons. And there you go. Charging session initiated. Simple as that. Okay, so now it's saying it's setting up communication with the car. Now, that must mean it's time to plug in. Oops, sorry. Trying to manoeuvre. Oh, jeez. Right, sorry about that. I'm trying to manoeuvre around my camera mount. And now I'm... Whoa! Jeez! Right, those cables are hugely unwieldy. Right, now it says we're connected. So then, if I press start on the screen... Okay, started with the app, there you go, we're charging at 18%. Oh, it's not one of the ones that shows you the actual current charge speed, that's a shame. Oh no, hang on, oh no, it's not, it's showing me how much is delivered. Hang on, what happens if I click on the information button? Nope, it's nothing to do with that. Okay, this is one of the ones that doesn't show you the current charge rate, but holy wow! 1% in 28 seconds. Really? Oh, jeez, that's amazing. That is genuinely amazing. 19% after... I mean, it could have been at 18.6% or something, I guess. Um, but yeah, we are charging. We are charging, people. Let's go and have a look at what it says in the car. That's 20% after one minute. That's 2% in one minute. Jeez. So that would be an 80% charge in 40 minutes if that keeps up. So we must be getting on close to 100 kilowatts at the moment. And I'll just switch. I'll show you the... Let's have a look at the ARP. Let's have a look at the Jaguar ARP and see what it's saying. Yeah, so uh, looking at the app, I'll cut in some uh, shots of it over to, to the side there. Yeah, we're getting, uh, well, I reckon 
I think it was, was it saying 190 something miles and then 180 miles. So that's about 180 miles per hour of charging. I'm just working that so very roughly. Well, that's basically 100% of the battery, isn't it? Well, more than. So yeah, that was charging at one point there, that was charging at about, I reckon that was 90 kilowatts. Um, it's a shame this is not one of the chargers that shows you your actual charge rate, but we've been charging for seven minutes now, seven minutes, 50 seconds, and we're at 30%. So we've added, well, we're doing one kilowatt hour. No, we're doing about one and a half kilowatt hours per minute. These are just rough estimates, but it gives us an idea. So that's 90 kilowatts. Yeah, we're charging at about 90 kilowatts at the moment. Um, now, I think we are seeing it taper from what I saw on the app a minute ago, So, I, but I might be wrong. But yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I can't believe that in eight minutes we've gone from 18 to 31%. That's brilliant. I'm so excited by this. Oh, this is the future. And if they reckon there's more to come from iPace charging, if they reckon they're going to improve it again, just wow. Anyway, I'm going to go and sit in the car because it's actually quite cold out here now, mainly because I haven't got a jacket on. But, um, but yeah, this, this is looking good. This is charging as charging should be. Okay, just a quick update now. As you can see, we're at 18 kilowatts. Well, we were at 18 kilowatts in just over 12 minutes. Um, so that's still sticking to the one and a half kilowatts per minute, uh, which is pretty much 90 kilowatts. Yeah, so that's been charging at 90 kilowatts pretty much all the way now to 38%. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're at thirty nine percent now, and we're still charging at about ninety kilowatts. Um, okay, it's maybe not quite a hundred, and these are just rough calculations. You have to bear in mind that that nineteen kilowatt hours that's been added has been done and calculated on the basis of including the the ramping up bit at the start. So if you include the ramping up at the start. You've, you know, so we have been probably sustaining 100 kilowatts for a, for some point during this. Really is guesswork, um, but extrapolating the numbers, you know, you, I mean, it's simple arithmetic to work out the average co uh, power of this particular charging session. You know, 40 minutes, 20 kilowatt hours, simple calculation. But basically, if you include the ramping up at the start, where we know it starts low and builds up. I reckon we're getting 100 kilowatts up to about 40% here. Yeah? That's my guess. Obviously, we're going to average probably closer to 85 kilowatt at the end because we're taking this up to 80%. But even at that, that's, you know, we know that's going to happen. It has to taper at some point. It can't do 100 kilowatts all the way. I would have liked to see, I mean, it's done it up to 40, which is what people were saying it, it couldn't do. There you go, I mean, 14 minutes, 50 seconds, 21.097 kilowatt hours. That's near enough. That's a shade under 90 kilowatt power. Um, allowing for charging inefficiencies, etc., etc. You know, that's pretty close to 100 kilowatt charging up to 40%. I'm impressed. I am very impressed. I can't believe that in the short time we've been stood here. Um, I mean, it's... 15 minutes and we've added 24% I mean yeah this is this is looking good but I'll stop it at 80 and we'll see that will give us the 18 to 80 time I know they always quote 0 to 80 but you're never going to be at 0 when you plug in well okay some people do that I would never run it down to 0 before I plugged in um, I know some people are prepared to take that risk. That seems a bit of a gamble to me. But by giving you the 18 to 80 figure, uh, that will tell us 
think it was a good idea of sort of charging times that can be attained with the I-Pace with these higher powered chargers. And I'm so far 43% already. So far I'm loving it. Yes! I can't believe we're finally starting to see these spread around the UK. Thank you, Ionity. Talk to you later! Yeah, okay, just another quick look at it now. We're at, yeah, it's definitely ramped downwards, but that's, you know, tapered, should I say. Ramping is upwards, tapering is downwards. Um, so now, yeah, you can see it. We're at, but we're up at 60% already. I mean, this is phenomenal. We've added, uh, what is it, 41% charge in 29 minutes. Um, I know it's below the 45 or 40, depending on what you read, it's below the 40 minutes or 45 minutes that Jaguar talks about for 0 to 80%. Um, you know, because extrapolating from that, it would take us just under an hour, in fact, to charge. Uh, you know, we, well, we've added 42% in 26 minutes. So we could add, well, I say 84% would be 50 minutes. I'm happy with that, you know, okay, it's not 40, it's not 45, but 50 minutes compared to an hour 20, yeah, I'll take that. I think they will refine it as well, but um, but yeah, you can see, as I say, you can see it's slowed down, we're now 36 and a half basically in 27 minutes, 20, well, it'll be 37 near enough in 27 minutes, so we're no longer at one and a half per minute, but we're still at, you know... 1.3 per minute average so yeah we're you know we're, we're looking good we are looking good it's it's fast charging i know there are people that will say oh if you had you know such and such a tesla and a v3 supercharger could do this but that's not what this is about you know this is about my needs and to be honest if i could charge add 80 percent to the battery in 50 minutes I'd be, I'd be very happy with that. If these were everywhere, that would be okay. Honestly, road trips would just be... I wouldn't say a non-event, but road trips would be so easy. I mean, as it is, to be honest, the 50 kilowatt is pretty good for, for my road trips, as, as you'll have seen. But there's a few times, not often, but there's a few times where we finished up what we wanted to do and are then waiting for the charger. With these, I don't think we would ever be doing that. And we wouldn't be doing ABC either. Um, but we're a long way off of anything like this being prolific across the north and west of Scotland, to be honest. But, um, but I hope they spread, and I hope they spread pretty quickly. But what would be awesome would be if Charge Place Scotland added chargers like these to their network. But I, I don't see it happening, in all honesty. You never know, fingers crossed. But, yeah, this is the future of charging. This is brilliant. 63%. Wow. Okay, let's uh, let's go and have a look now. Um, I get the definite feeling that it is starting to taper, but we're at seventy four percent. So I'd be stunned if it wasn't tapering. In all honesty, um, right? What have we got here then? Forty eight point seven added in thirty seven and a half minutes. Yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see it's definitely tapering. 
but we've gone from 18 to 74 in 37 minutes um, and that that is rapid charging yeah I mean I know there are people who will say that that's not good enough I'm sure there's gonna be Tesla fanboys laughing up their sleeves at this um, especially if they've got a Model 3 and access to a V3 supercharger um, so I'm just looking at the number of insects that have decided to land on the bonnet of my car they're not dead they're midges they're very much alive sadly um, but they seem to like they seem to like Corris Grey they're all on the bonnet of my car um, so yeah there we go we're at 75% 50 added in 38 minutes I'll do some arithmetic when I when I finish this charging session and uh, and I'll give you the, the actual numbers in the update at, at the end, in the roundup at the end. But I have to say, so far, I'm impressed. This is fine for me. I mean, if they can improve on it, great. But if it never gets better than this, I'm happy. This is good enough. Because like I said, when we stop, you know, if we've driven three or four hours, we are going to want to stop for longer than a few minutes. Um, so... You know, we're going to want to have a coffee, a pee, maybe something to eat, stretch our legs. A 40-minute charge is not a big deal for us on those on those kind of trips. Um, and we'll be able to top up, do quick zapping dashes, which will add a meaningful amount, uh, much more than the than the 50 kilowatt zapping dash would add. Um, yeah, excellent. Anyway, I'll talk to you very shortly because we'll be stopping the charge very soon. Okay, right, we're at 79%. So I'm gonna come out of the car and get ready to stop the charge. Um, just need to see how to stop it. Well, there's a stop button on the screen. I suppose that's a bit of a giveaway. Um, 79, I'm gonna get it to 80 and stop it at exactly 80. So I can then uh, do my arithmetic. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's mighty impressive. That was a fast charging stop. Forty, well, but forty-two minutes. Let's say forty-three by the time it's finished to get from eighteen percent to eighty percent. That's that's impressive. That is impressive. Uh, right. So all we need to do now is wait. There it goes. Eighty percent. Okay. I am going to stop the charge. 53.3 in 42 minutes, 47. Oops, sorry. Um, right, there we go. Uh, connect, okay. And then, oops, I left my keys in the car. But I assume it is now chopped, chopped charging. Stop charging yet. The screen says it's initializing, so the car has stopped charging at 80%. All right, I will quickly do some arithmetic and I'll, I'll update you on the, uh, on the trip back. But for now, I will unplug the charger. And oops. Oops, there we go. Right, sorry, that was all a bit frantic. So that's the charger unplugged, back on the machine, and we're ready to go. Sorry this has all been filmed handheld today, by the way, but I needed the camera mount uh, for the tripod um, to, to lock it off against the screen. Um, no, why is it? Okay. Right, yeah, so there you go. That's Ionity. I will get on the road and I will talk to you on the way home with a bit of a roundup of what I think of the experience and the final figures and what my average charge rate was. Talk to you in a minute. So, my friends, that was Ionity. And it was brilliant. It was painless. Um, 
I will... Do you know, I'm going to call them. I'm going to contact them and try and get the graph for that charging session. If I get it, I'll put it up on screen for you now. Um, so bear in mind that the numbers I'm about to start reeling off won't necessarily relate to the actual graph. So uh, if the graph is on screen, ignore me and look at the graph and I'll put some text up to explain the graph as well. But uh, if there's no graph, then these are my guesstimates of what I was getting today. Okay, well, I decided to re-record this section because the numbers I actually started uh, putting out there were just rubbish. Um, they were my guesstimates, but they were wrong, and it was going to cause confusion with the graph on screen. So this is the graph of uh, my charging session. I never managed to get one from Ionity, unfortunately, but this one I produced myself just by uh, replaying the video and taking an exact number of kilowatt hours added every minute on the minute for the whole session and then uh, extrapolating that into uh, kilowatts every single minute as we went along. So as you can see we started off the first minute is shown as 90 kilowatts but you have to remember that includes the ramp up from zero. So basically for the first three minutes we were over 100 kilowatts, 102 in minute 2, 101 in minute 3 um, but then it drops quite quickly or rapidly or instantly in fact which is what a lot of people have described uh, to 81 kilowatts and then it slowly slowly ramps up to 84 uh, in I think that's 19 minutes uh, it's at 84 so that would explain why my off the top of my head calculations were showing um, or were giving me in excess of 90 kilowatts because of course three minutes over 100 kilowatts followed by uh, 16 minutes 15 16 minutes of 84 kilowatts is going to give you an average of around 90 kilowatts um, then after that uh, 19 minutes and we we're about uh, 49 percent charge I think at that point um, you can see that it drops off then slowly it, rather than a lot of cars which suddenly drop uh, the eyepiece actually tapers quite slowly um, to the point where I stopped it at 80% um, we were still getting 53 kilowatts at 80% so uh, so that's that's the graph of the charging session and uh, yeah it does explain you know, that would tie in with my rough guess of 50 minutes to add 80% state of charge. Um, and yeah, there you go. It was so simple. You know, again, it's how charging should be. It was as simple as can be. My only slight teensy weensy criticism is I wish they would do what Instavolt does and just take contactless payment cards. You know, apps are just a bit of a pain to use. I mean, it was very simple. It was a straightforward app. It wasn't a complicated app to use today. You know, it was fairly uh, simple and straightforward. You know, it was, there weren't many steps to it. It was just scan the QR code on the charger, uh, click on the card you want to use, type in your three-digit code off the back, and... You know, and then plug in the car, basically. That's all there was to it. But, it would be so much more simple just to get, well, to either call up my payment card on my Apple Watch or, you know, get my debit card out of my wallet. But I would, I would just tap my Apple Watch and pay that way. You know, so much simpler to just go up tap your watch on the screen, plug your car in, and you're done. You know, that's how it should be. That's what Instavolt is. That's how Instavolt works. And it is brilliant. It's simple. So that's my only slight teensy criticism, is I wish they would not force you to use the app and just let you use contactless payment. But that aside, it was very simple. The cables are a bit unwieldy, but all of these so 150 kilowatt plus chargers, that is the case. They're all 
thick cables because the cable has to be thick to cope with the current that's coming through it so um, they're all a bit like that and I was suffering a bit it was a bit more unwieldy for me so I apologize for the terrible footage just during the plugging in process but it was a bit more unwieldy for me um, because obviously I had the tripod set up in front of the charger and I was also trying to do it all one-handed while filming with the other hand so you know having to get the cable and maneuver it around my tripod um, made it more unwieldy you know but they are they're thick cables they don't bend very easily so you know it, it's kind of it's quite a, an effort involved in getting the charging connector the CCS connector straight when you're plugging it into your car depending on exactly how you've how you've parked um, but again that's a very minor complaint it wasn't a problem it wasn't difficult it's just if you're used to using 50 kilowatt chargers you will notice that difference straight away because um, it is very noticeable you know um, but other than that you know and again it's not difficult it's just it's something I noticed um, completely simple completely straightforward good charging speed uh, no problems no false charges no stopping um, and yeah completely ah, I just loved it also the charging side something that's just crossed my mind is a great uh, charging location because there's nothing there you're never going to get iced on that ionity charger because um the only people that will be going into that bit of tarmac are going to be people that want to plug their ev in it's too far away from the bp station for somebody to park up you know that wants to go and get a coffee or something they would park in the bp forecourt more likely it's too uh, far away from the motorway services there's absolutely no reason to park there and go into the services um, and there's nothing else there so the only people that will go in there will be EV owners so instantly they've dealt with the ice problem straight away by putting it in a location that ice people aren't going to go ice drivers aren't going to want to use those spaces so Brilliant to see four stalls. Um, I was a bit surprised that I got the whole charge session without anybody else arriving. I really thought somebody else would turn up. Um, but they didn't. Uh, it was just me on my little lonesome Billy No Mates there. Um, but, but yeah, four stalls is great. Um, there didn't seem to be much room for expansion, I have to say, so I, I don't know how they would improve on the four stalls, but I'm sure they could add more. I'm sure there's a way they could take it up to... Um, I reckon they could get six out of it. Eight, maybe? But I think it would be starting to get quite tight. But four stalls is great. Plus, uh, at the same site, there's a tesla supercharger site with i think six or eight stalls i think it's six and an ecotricity site with two stalls all within that one service station so that's quite a big charging hub now that's quite a decent facility for for ev charging um you know we will get to a point where we need more i'm sure you know it's just it's gonna come but uh for the moment that service station is quite future proof for the for the near to midterm future at least I would say. Um, so yeah, that was that was my Ionity experience. So as I say, I will try and get that graph and, and I'll have shown it by now if I did. Um, the yeah, the timings were brilliant. We you know forty two minutes to get from eighteen percent to eighty percent. That's brilliant. That's a standard road trip for me. You know, that's that's how I would drive a road trip. I would get to 20%. If I was in an area with reliable charging uh, networks around, not, you know, if you've seen my Charge Play Scotland road trips where I'm using ABC on some of them because of the old style Evo chargers, you know, this, what I'm about to say doesn't apply to those, but for normal road trips where you're driving along the motorway or 
down to you know from Scotland down to England or you know whatever um, that would be normal for me I would get to 20% and then look for the next charger so I'll get there with about 18% like I did today plug in take it up to 80 maybe 90 at push but you know take it to 80% that's a 42 minute stop for that charge you go you have a coffee or something to eat you have a pee you come back to your car and it's finished charging and you're off you know or if you wanted to take it to 90 I reckon that would have taken me and I'm guessing but I reckon it would have taken me about uh, 50 minutes to go from 18 to 90 I wouldn't go above 90 unless you've got a real need to and a real reason to like again on my Charge Play Scotland uh, videos you'll have seen certain instances where I have taken it up to 100 but there's always a really good reason for it um, but certainly for normal driving normal road trips I would say uh, 80% maybe 90 if you want to press on a bit um, so for that you would be looking at a 50 minute stop which is way better than you know that 50 minute stop would be probably an hour and 20 an hour and, an hour and a quarter to an hour 20 under the old uh, 50 kilowatt charges so that's a huge improvement suddenly you know that goes from having your coffee and your pee and then still having to sit around for 40 minutes ish uh, to having your coffee and your pee and just getting in your car and going so I'm talking about peeing a lot here um, but you get my point <laughs> you know suddenly you're not spending any time charging really because that charging session by being compressed by the 120 100 you know sorry 100 kilowatt charging speed gives you um you know a, a short enough break that that you can you can charge up in the time that you're doing something else rather than doing that other thing and then still having to wait around for a bit um now that hasn't happened to me that often on a road trip because we tend to stop a little bit more often than getting the car down to 20% or 10%, you know, because um, I've made quite a few jokes at my wife's expense, uh, you know, but she does like to have more regular breaks than that. So in those instances, I would always plug in anyway. I would always plug in, even if I'm just going for a 10, 15 minute break to use the bathrooms, I'll still plug in for that because it reduces the next charging stop. Um, these could effectively take that away to be honest you might not even need to do that if you could access you know a, a high ultra high speed charger but um but yeah it's once these start to spread and i hope it happens i really hope these start to spread on the motorways you know i want these to be put in at motorway service locations not tucked away 10 15 minutes off the motorway um then that makes a big difference yeah these these are brilliant the even the even the charging socket looked sleek and more high tech the the ccs plug um loved it loved it so so yeah there you go those chargers make road trips a non-event they really do once these spread and once there's enough ionities and 125 uh, kilowatt uh, instavolts and the 150 kilowatt BP polars and the fast neds, whatever they are, I think they're 175 kilowatts. You know, once these proliferate and spread around so that there's easy access to them off of Britain's motorway network, you know, as easy as getting to a motorway service station for petrol. At that point, driving an EV around Britain becomes a complete non-event. I would venture to suggest it's already a non-event. It's already very simple. But you do waste some time charging sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Um, these chargers take that away. And even with... I, I don't... I don't feel that the, like the 350 kilowatt speed that the Taycan is, is promoting... I think it's really just bragging rights. I don't think it's that necessary. Having experienced it myself and knowing that 
Okay, there are some drivers that will drive for four hours, fill their car up and drive for another four hours. I know those people exist and they want 350 kilowatt charging, but I would venture to suggest that most people, after even three hours driving on a motorway, want to stop for 45 minutes, get something to eat, have a coffee, you know, use the, I know I'm saying it again, but use the bathrooms and then get back on the road. And that is 40, 40 45 minutes. So, you know, honestly, the iPace charging speed is there or thereabouts now. I don't need any faster. If they could push it to 120, that would probably just get it down. Just that tiny couple of minutes would then get to the point where you never, or I certainly, I certainly would never be waiting for the car to charge on a road trip. Um, but as it is even now, if I could find 100 kilowatt chargers everywhere I go, I actually don't think I would ever feel that the charging was too slow. That's as it stands without pushing any improvements to the car. Um, but I know that there are people who would like to see it at least a bit quicker. Um, but for me, you know, 45, 50 minutes as opposed to 35 minutes, 37 minutes isn't enough of a difference to start, you know, really noticing. It's not going to make me go, oh, wow! Although I probably will when it finally happens. But do you know what I mean? Going from an hour and a quarter, an hour and 20 minutes to 45, 50 minutes, that's a big step. That's a big difference. That's a huge change to how long road trips take. Going from 50 minutes to 37 minutes or whatever really isn't. Um, you know, with two charging stops, you're going to get to where you're going maybe 25 minutes earlier. You know, that's not a huge deal. Whereas this way, with, with these charges, you're going to be getting to your destination an hour earlier. You know, which is it's a big difference. And it's not just the time of the journey. It's the amount of time you spend sitting around waiting for it. It becomes zero. Once that becomes zero, then an EV actually becomes better than an ICE vehicle. Because you go for a pee, I'm doing it again, I know, food, stretch your legs in an ICE vehicle, you then have to drive 100 yards to the petrol station and then spend 5 to 10 minutes filling your car up with petrol and paying for it. So, if you can get EV charging to a point where you literally are charging only while you're away doing something and you're not standing around or sitting in the car waiting for it to charge, at that point is more efficient. And these ionities are the first step in reaching that goal. Um, and once these are prolific and them and the other companies offering that same facility, then you will see road journeys that are actually only marginally admittedly but marginally quicker than doing that same journey in a petrol car unless you're one of that rare breed and they are a rare breed that doesn't like to take a break every so often when they're driving long distance um, so there you go that's my thoughts um, what did you what did you think about the video? What did you think about the Ionity chargers? Have you used them? Let me know in the comments down below if you have. Um, I'd love to hear other people's experiences and if it was as simple for you as it is for me, what you think about using the app. Um, I'd also like to hear from anybody, <laughs> big pink Bentley limo there, stretch limo. Um, yeah, let me know. Have you used Fastnet? Have you used one of the own, well, the one BP Polar, I think that's 150 kilowatt charger. Have you tried that yet? Have you tried the only site, uh, I don't know where it is off the top of my head, that's got the Instavolt 125 or potentially, they're a bit, it's a bit difficult to work out from their press release, but Potentially, they could offer up to 250 kilowatts, I believe, if nobody's charging at the other charger. It's 250 kilowatts 
chair shared between two chargers um, so if you turn up and nobody's plugged into the other one in your Taycan for example I don't know if they would give you to if that one charger would give you 250 kilowatts um, if MD's got experience of this, I know there's no Taycans out there, but there are e-trons which can charge above 125. So has anybody out there tried that? Have they got have they got the full 125 kilowatts? Um, and only that? Or have they got more than that? Has anybody tried the Instavolt ultra high speed chargers? Um, I would love to know. Um, yeah, um, sorry, I've just realised I missed my tunneling in amongst that, so I'm just going to do a quick deeply insulting, I'm going to enjoy this moment, uh, deeply insulting drive through <laughs> of a petrol station <laughs> in order uh, to go back the way I was coming. I really, really enjoyed that. I got more out of that than a healthy individual should, I suspect. Um, but yeah, so, sorry, in the comments down below, please let me know. What is your experience of any chargers with more than a uh, 50 kilowatt charging speed? Have you had, uh, you know, and any vehicle, this is not I-Pace specific, specific, although I suspect most people watching this are I-Pace drivers but if you're not please let me know how have you found the experience with these high speed chargers um, any comments you do leave I will promise to respond to unless as ever they're either spam or personal abuse in which case I probably won't bother so uh, don't waste your time um, yeah so any comments will be gratefully received and responded to. Um, if you have liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel and it's a big morale booster for me as well. And it costs you nothing. So uh, yeah, if you, if you have enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. Um, also, if you're enjoying the channel generally, then please do subscribe. That also helps me out a lot. Um, and if you do subscribe, if you click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button, you will get a notification from YouTube every time I upload a new video and you won't miss anything going forwards. Um, if you do want to subscribe, you can do that right now as well, just by clicking on my ugly little face over there. And uh, don't forget to check out some of the other videos on my channel, like this one up here. Until next time, this is a fully charged up Abu Dhabi dude saying so long, take care, see you soon. Bye! Abu Dhabi dude!